Hello. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions at the moment about HMOs. They're definitely back on the agenda. Uh, I think what's fueling it, if I know what's fueling it, it's uh, the idea that um, mortgages are going up, cash flow is being squeezed, the traditional buy to let model is becoming harder and people are looking for alternatives and an HMO would be. There's other things being talked about as well. Should we do social houses, should we do this, should we do Airbnb? But definitely HMOs are something that's on the, um, on the, on the agenda. Um, first thing, buy to let done well still works. Definitely, definitely still works. You buy the right house for the right price, mortgages are back to normal. Um, or as normal as they're going to be for the next two, three, four, five years even. Yeah, that is the rate we're going to be back. When interest rates were 0.25%, that wasn't normal. So interest rates are now at roughly where they were you know, 10 years ago before the crazy credit crunch and whatnot. Rents are higher, so buy to let still works. But HMOs are on the agenda. Um, we're not really touching on, on um, holiday lets and social housing. I think that's a social housing seems to be a bit risky. We've got we, we've had a bit of a dabbling, a bit of, bit of an idea on that, and a bit of a few goes on that, and, and you end up with maybe is it an arsonist in your house or whatever. You know, it's like not 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 for us. Uh, and, and and holiday lets, lots of extra work. If you want a job, fine. And again, there's some more regulation coming. So we're concentrating on buy to lets and HMOs. Uh, three years ago. Four years ago, we were, and beyond, you know, my first one 16 years ago, um, we've been putting HMOs together. But for a period of time, up, up until about three years ago, it was, it was just before COVID, and COVID put a kibosh on new HMOs, but we put together 350, 400 HMO units. So we are, oh, by the way, we are the UK's number one property source. I should have maybe started with that. So we, we find fix and rent houses. We put together uh, HMOs for, for our landlords and, and buy to let single lets as well. Um, so we've got a lot of experience. Like I say, it kind of stopped. There was a period of time where um, COVID, people just left HMO rooms. Quite often they went back to mum and dad's or back home or wherever it was. They were, it was almost like a temporary accommodation, like a, you know, a thing for a secondment with a job, but the job closed so they could do it from home. And home really was 300 miles away or whatever. So HMOs emptied out. It took quite a lot of a, a time to refill those, maybe sort of nine months before they came back. Then there was a cost of living crisis and the, um, you know, the cost of the, uh, the, the, the heating and all that stuff went up. It was like people, if you had an HMO, Highly leveraged, perhaps mortgages went up. It was tough. Um, personally, my HMO portfolio, I didn't stop making money, but it was it was massively impacted. You know, the profits came down. That's all changed. Um, mortgages are now normal, like I say. Houses are full. Uh, rents are rising. HMO room rents are rising. Um, my heating bill's gone down to the you know a quarter, a third of what it was. Uh, so HMOs are understandably back on the agenda for exactly the same reasons they always were before. Um, you know, we, a landlord would buy an HMO for, they understand it's a bigger capital investment, it just costs more to, do, put, to put the HMO together, um, it takes a bit more running, not too much more if you, if you do things right, um, but you will get a better return out of it yield-wise than a single let. I mean, there's loads of good reasons buying a single let. They just sit in the background and you forget them. But if you want cash flow, if you want to replace an income, for example, if you want to leave your job now, you've got a capital pot, typical one, I've just retired or taken early retirement, or I've got a capital pot, I can buy four or five HMOs. I can I can quit work now. That's, that, that's a, a, a client type that we have quite often. Um, then HMOs are on the agenda for you. It's got to do it right. You've got to buy the right house in the right area. Location's really key for an HMO. It's got to be done to the right standard. We like to have as many H, uh, sorry, ensuite rooms as possible. If it can be fully ensuite, great. If you can have an off suite or like that, that's sort of a, a room with its own bathroom, but it's over the corridor or something, acceptable. Uh, having a couple of people sharing one bathroom might also be acceptable, but you want to maximize the quality. It doesn't have to, you don't have to have gold plated taps marble bathrooms and a hot tub in the garden. I don't believe you need to go to that extent. That's not going to get you extra yield versus the cost and the upkeep. We like to keep our HMOs um, looking good, but actually, if you look close, it's, it's utilitarian. That's probably the best word. It's, it's hard wearing. We don't put tiles in. We put a full um, splash back up so there's no grout to get through. You've got to make sure everything's, you know, the showers, if it's going to leak, it's going to leak there. Um, 
the kitchen's going to be robust. We spend a bit of extra money on the kitchen to make sure it's a good quality one and uh, won't sort of get... It can take a bit of wear and tear. You know, there's quite a lot of people in this house. You know, hardware and carpets, mats here and there, that kind of stuff. And then we decorate it really nicely. And we don't... Again, it's not floral wallpaper at a £1,000 a roll. It's paint on the walls, which is a colour. Um, and we, we make it look nice, but we don't go over the top on the, on the spend. Then you've got to choose your tenant right put the right tenant in there and you've got to know all those things about compliance the smoke alarms need testing the um the fire seals on the door need testing the the, the emergency lighting you've got to keep all the um areas clean and clear for fire obstruction i'm just generally clean you know having sending a cleaner in um there's a lot to be managed you you've got to um, cut the garden twice in the summer. You've got to clear the gutters, all those things. The tenants are renting room by room by room. If you are at all interested in finding out whether a buy-to-let, sorry, an HMO, oh God, fluff my lines. Uh, if you are at all interested in finding out if a HMO um, property is for you, we're running a webinar. It is next Thursday, the 26th at 12.30 p.m and the webinar will run uh, through you know, what an HMO is, the pros and cons of it, where to find it, how to put it together if you're gonna put the HMO together yourself. There's a lot, the schedule of works involved is you know, you've got a fireball or all the ceilings, you've got amenity space standards, you've got all sorts of things like, we've got little tips and tricks, like we always put a humidity accent, uh, sensing extractor fan in, we always put PR, PIR sensors in in places, all sorts of little tips and tricks, so how to put it together, and then how to manage it long term. So the webinar will cover all those things, we'll have a questions and answers session afterwards, so you can get any questions and answers you've got, uh, pop along. There's a link below. Uh, wherever you are watching this, whether it's a social media post, it's an email, or it's a um, vid YouTube video, there'll be a link wherever the usual links are. Click on it uh, and self-register for that webinar. I shall see you there and um, we'll get all your questions answered. Bye for now.